The 1980s were credited for a lot of things, including cardboard mail cartons that began popping up featuring photos of missing children around the U.S. The program began with a few local dairies in the Midwest. The milk cartons helped to profile and help find missing children and reunite them back with their families. It soon was adopted nationwide. In 1984, Eaton Pats became one of the first children to have his face displayed on a milk carton. The six-year-old tragically disappeared on the morning of May 25, 1979, while he was on his way to the school bus in Manhattan. His father began to widely distribute images of the boy, hoping to locate someone who had seen the child. Pats's widely publicized disappearance made media headlines and grabbed the nation's attention. Concerned parents began to demand having a nationwide system to track missing kids even across state lines, eventually forming the Missing Children Milk Carton Program in 1984. As I said earlier, the program began with just a few local dairies in the Midwest printing pictures of missing children on their milk cartons. But missing children actually appeared on milk cartons before Eaton Pats in the 1980s. 13-year-old Johnny Gosh from his paper route in Des Moines, Iowa in 1982 and the kidnapping of six-year-old Adam Walsh from a Sears store the year before. This led to increased efforts to combat child snatching. Pictures of missing children appeared everywhere, from mail cartons to pizza boxes, grocery bags, and envelopes. Their faces underneath the troubling question, have you seen me? By 1985, about 700 independent dairies across the U.S. were displaying the faces of missing children on their milk cartons. The effort began to die down just a few years later, however, and by the late 80s, most milk cartons were not featuring missing children. It was widely felt that the milk carton program was controversial. While it did help raise public awareness, there is not much evidence that it proved it was successful in reuniting missing children with their families. One success case was three-year-old Bonnie Lohman in the late 80s. Her mother and stepfather kidnapped her from the home she shared with her father. Years later, when she was seven, Bonnie recognized her own face on the back of a milk carton in a grocery store. Bonnie was eventually reunited with her father. There were other reasons that the milk carton program rapidly declined in popularity. Child-rearing expert Dr. Benjamin Spock claimed the images of missing children were emotionally harmful for kids to see every morning increasing their anxiety that they would also go missing. Others criticized the campaign's focus on stranger danger, despite strangers making up a very small percentage of kidnappers. While others claim the milk cartons disproportionately featured white children, even though children of color have made up a larger percentage of the missing children demographic. There were other more practical reasons why the milk carton photos disappeared. For one, the dairy industry changed from cardboard milk cartons to plastic ones. Ultimately, the milk carton campaign stopped being effective because people just stop paying attention to them, according to The Atlantic. Because kids' pictures were everywhere, people got used to seeing them and no longer looked closely at their faces. Also, quicker and more effective methods were implemented to alert the public about missing children. In 1996, the invention of the Amber Alert System caused the milk carton ads not to be needed. While the effectiveness of the milk carton campaign has continued to be debated, there is no doubt that it was able to significantly raise public awareness of the problem of child abductions and help promote the modern nationwide system of tracking missing children. Like the Bonnie Loman case who happened to see a photo of herself in a grocery store and was able to be found, success scenarios were rare and far in between. I mentioned Eaton Pats's name earlier, and eventually his killer was found and convicted. Not by his picture on a milk carton, but through a tip the police got about possibly someone's brother-in-law. So that's the story behind missing kids on milk cartons. I can still remember them vividly. Whether it was a good idea or a bad idea, I'll let someone else decide that. This is H.A. Graves.